this is David. Today I'm going to show you how to use Azure Media Services to add captioning to your video, which is really helpful for people that are hard of hearing or if you want to add uh, captions when you want to listen at a low volume or maybe even adding captions in different languages. Those are all supported by Azure Media Services. If you watched the previous vis videos on Azure Media Services, then this will be a review for you. To create a new Azure Media Service, I go to the Azure portal and I click create a resource, the big green plus button, and I could type, I could search for it in here or I'll just navigate to it. It happens to be on our mobile media services right here and I'll fill in things like a name, DG test media SVC, um, a resource group, I'll call it DG test RESGRP, uh, put it in the East US is fine. I need to create a storage account to store all of my media. I'll do one here. I'll call it DG test uh, STOR. How about that? All looks good. Click on OK there and create. What that's going to do is going to create a resource group, and in that resource group, it'll add my new Azure Media Service and my Azure storage account. Now let's take about a minute or two, so I'm going to pause the video here and I'll come back when that's all done. We're back. It took less than a minute to create all those things, uh, but now I have an Azure Media Service right here. Now what I want to do is to add a video to that, which you have saw in a previous video. All I have to do is go down to the Assets tag, or, uh, Assets Blade right here, and click Upload and click this little icon right here to select a file. And I've got one here of this good looking fellow narrating a poem by Edgar Allan Poe. Right here, and now this is done. I can close it and I can see that right here I have this poe.mov is listed in the assets. And if I click on it, I see some details about it, all sorts of things right here. And the one thing I really want to do is to encode that video, make it available on multiple platforms. So I open this up. I can, I'll take all the defaults and click on create. And what happens here is that it doesn't immediately encode it. It creates a job so that it is now scheduled to be encoded. And I can see the, 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 status that job. It starts up with scheduled and then queued and then processing and then finished. Right now it's in a queued state looking for resources. It started processing at 0%. So it's just rounding down to zero. It's probably like 0.1% right now. And when it gets to 100%, then my video will be encoded into multiple formats and I'll be able to share it. But it won't have any captions available to it. So while this is running, this will take a couple of minutes. It's uh, the, the how long it takes is actually dependent upon how long the video is and how large it is. So uh, this happens to be a really short video, so this won't take too long, but I don't want you to wait. So I will pause recording now and I'll come back when we are at 100%. After about two or three minutes, the encoding job has now reached 100%. It is finished. So we can come over here and we'll notice that in the assets, we now have two assets listed, one for original video and one for the encoded video. Uh, what we want to do next is we want to run an analysis on this video right here, the original video right here. So we want to analyze that and that will do things like uh, create closed caption files. It actually will can create it by default. These three boxes are checked. It'll create it in all three of these formats. These are all pretty popular formats. I think this one uh, seems to be seems to me to be the most popular one, but you can use all those. You can also generate index files for doing full text search in SQL Server and a keyword file, things like that if you want to as well. Um, I'm just going to leave everything in the defaults here. I want the t titles to be in English, so I will click Create right here. And once again, it doesn't immediately analyze it. It actually queues it up by creating this job right here. There's the job. It's in a queued state right now. Once it finds the resources inside of Azure, then it'll move to processing and eventually get, there it is, processing, and eventually this will get to 100%. This is the way that Azure um, makes things more scalable by, by queuing things up and using resources in a more efficient manner. This isn't a mission critical process. Um, this is something that you're going to do one time and it'll be available for the long term. So again, this takes some time, so I'm going to pause the video again and come back when we get to 100%. The analyzed job is now at 100%. It is finished, so we can 
close this job and then we'll notice that over here in the list of assets now we have a third asset right here this is the indexed asset here and if I open that up see there's a blade specific that down at the bottom is the relevant part there are the files that were created and I can click on one of these files as I said I, th I think this one is the VTT is a popular format so I'll use that and you notice that there's a message here you need to publish the asset with a progressive locator in order to get a download URL for the asset file the progressive locator should not be expired so I'll do that I will come back to here and I will publish this and then I will click add and it published it. I don't think you have to wait for this. It's right away. We're good. And now I should be able to download that file. So if I go back to here, then I have a download link right here. Click that and copy it. And if I just open up Notepad right here, you can see this is a really long email. It's got some stuff on the query string. I noticed when I put this in a browser, it wasn't able to figure out the MIME type of this. Maybe your browsers are different, but there's a lot of ways of downloading a file. I think uh, what I would like to use is curl. If you haven't used curl before, um, it's a pretty simple thing. Some, some operating systems have it loaded automatically. If not, you can go to curl.hacks.se right here and then download it and install it. It's a pretty simple, lightweight install. It's just a bunch of web utilities. So what I do is I have here this folder right here. I'll type in uh, curl uh, dash o. I'll give the file a name. I'll call this uh, captions.vtt and uh, actually why don't I call it the same name as the original file which was po dot vtt and then I'll paste in the download right here and it downloaded that file right here po.dvtt so if I do notepad po.vtt you can see here it is the text of that file so this is the text I forgot to show you actually the file itself this is a recording of me it was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived, whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. So that's a famous poem by Poe, and and it didn't do everything perfectly. I better correct this. Kingdom by the sea. So I'm going to actually correct this. And in here, it's just a text file. that a maiden there lived, whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden should have rather thought than to love and be loved by me. So I'll correct the things that I happen to know are wrong and I'll save that file right here and now I want to associate this file with a with my video. Now that I have a VTT file, I want to associate that file with this video. And what I can do is just come into here and upload captions to the encoded video and select a file by clicking that icon and there's my VTT file right there. Click on open, it'll upload it and that's it, it's all done. Now I have a video and I have a, a caption file associated with it. I wanna share this with others. So here I want to, first thing I wanna publish this video, click on add right there. And now it's added to the locator and you see that it's a, there's a streaming endpoint right here, but it's red. If I click on it, it tells me that to begin streaming, the streaming endpoint must be running. Click here to update the streaming endpoint. I'll do that. Click on that and I want to start the streaming endpoint. Yeah. So this allows the the video to be seen by in this case anyone. I haven't put any restrictions on this. You can add that later on if you want to. I'll pause this while it starts up. A few minutes have passed and now the streaming endpoint has started so I can go back to 
this asset properties thing and play the video uh, right here in my browser or inside of the portal. It was. So that's that's fine, but you want to share it with other people. So what you want to do there is this playback URL. Copy that. If we look at it, it looks like this right here. And we copy it without the HTTP colon. Leave the slash slash in there. And we're going to use that with a player. And there's a play, something called the Azure Media Player right here. You can search for that, Azure Media Player. It's this ampdemo.azureedge.net right here. Yep. It's a sampled video playing there. But if I wanted to play my video, I'll copy this URL right here without the protocol at the beginning and update that. And now here, we've seen this before in an earlier video that we can actually share that. It was out many without any captions. There's no menu down here to show closed captions. If I want to show captions, I need to click on the advanced option here and then click add track right here and select captions or subtitles. Either one will work. Put a label for this because I can have multiple caption sets. Uh, the language, there's a lot of languages that are supported. I'll put English right here. For the URL of this VTT, we're going to use the same location as this URL here, where the, the ISM manifest is. If I copy that, I can paste it into here, and the only difference will be instead of this something.ism.manifest, I'll put the name of the VT, v, VTT file, po.vtt. When I do that, and I update the player now, I not only get this, but it was that many pause this and you'll see that now there's this closed captioning menu right here and it has English down at the bottom because that's the track that I added and if I add that then there. and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee so there we go that's this um, how to create closed captioning in a video hosted in Azure Media Services. If you want more information on this, or if you want to see the step-by-step -step instructions, I've actually documented there at my blog, which is at davidgr.com, and there's a post from August of 2018 in here. Right here, adding closed captions to a video with Azure Media Services. Here it is. This is the full URL right there. I'll put that in the show notes. And uh, if we scroll down, there were screenshots and step-by-step -step instructions for how to do what I've just shown you here. This is David. Thank you for watching.